Thank you. Um, on behalf of NEUROPS 2019, I'm very proud to present the outstanding New Directions Paper Prize Award to Vaishnav Nagarajan and Zico Kolter for their paper, Uniform Convergence May Be Unable to Explain Generalization in Deep Learning. Please join me in congratulating the authors. <laughs> Thank you. Now, uh, Vaishnav will present the paper. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to my talk. So what's this paper about? One of the biggest open challenges central to deep learning theory is that of the generalization puzzle. Standard learning theory suggests that models that have many, many more parameters than training data points should not really generalize well. And yet, heavily overparameterized deep networks have continued to give state-of-the-art generalization performance. What explains this counterintuitive behavior? Now, theoretical works have tried to crack this puzzle by deriving upper bounds on the generalization gap of upper bounds on the generalization gap of deep networks. And crucially, all these bounds are based on a single, uh, most of these bounds are based on a single learning theoretic tool called uniform convergence. Now, despite a lot of work in the space, a tight generalization bound has so far been elusive. So in light of this, in our paper, we take a step back and we argue that this high level research direction of pursuing uniform convergence-based generalization bounds in deep learning may not really give us a full understanding of the solution to the generalization puzzle. So that's the high-level message of the paper. And in this talk, I'll first go over some background work quickly, and then I will present to you our two main findings, which are limitations of uniform convergence-based bounds. So what do we know about uniform convergence in the context of deep learning until before this work? So we look at uniform, uh, the definition of uniform convergence a lot more formally later in the talk. But at a high level, this is what these bounds do. These bounds take the set of all functions or hypotheses that can be, com uh, that can be realized by a deep network. And then they compute some notion of complexity of this whole set of functions. Now, a deep network is a really expressive model, and therefore, these bounds become really loose. Or to be more precise, the numerator here grows with a parameter count, and that's going to be larger than the denominator in the overparameterized regime, and hence lead to a vacuous bound. Now, how do we address this? The solution that was proposed was to refine these uniform convergence bounds by taking into account the implicit bias of the training algorithm, that is, SGD. That means we should somehow ignore extraneous functions in this function class and instead focus on a much smaller relevant part of the function class and compute bo the bounds accordingly. And the hope was that this would yield tighter bounds that do not grow with the parameter count and would instead depend on some appropriate notion of complexity that, that grows with certain weight norms in the network that are implicitly controlled by SGD, like distance from initialization, spectral norms, and so on. Now, this proposal triggered a huge line of exciting works that have tried to refine uniform convergence bounds in many different ways using many different tools like Rademacher complexity, PacBase, and so on. Now, all these works provide a lot of intuition about generalization in deep learning, and they all explain generalization in certain aspects. However, unfortunately, each of these bounds also fail to explain generalization in other aspects. Either these bounds are too large or grow with the parameter count, unlike the actual generalization gap, or these are small, or the ones that are small or non-vacuous hold only on a modified network. They do not hold on the original network learned by SGD, but they require certain kinds of modifications like compression, ex explicit regularization, randomization, and so on. So in light of this, we want to take a step back and understand the limitations of uniform convergence bounds. And here's our first finding which is an empirically observed limitation of uniform convergence. In most hyperparameter configurations in deep learning, you'd observe that as you increase the number of training data points, the generalization gap improves. It decreases with the 
training set size, and that's expected. But what is, surprise, what is surprising is that there are certain hyperparameter configurations where even though the generalization gap decreases with training set size, you would observe that existing generalization bounds increase with training set size in complete contrast to that. Now, what's really surprising about this is that this increase is observed even though the denominator here contains a training set size term. And that's, and that's because the numerator here contains certain weight norms that increase quite drastically with the training set size. Now, we present many other related observations in the paper, but the main point that I want to highlight for this talk is that we've all been focusing on deriving generalization bounds that have improved parameter count dependence. But looking ahead, it's also important to derive bounds that simultaneously satisfy at least a reasonable dependence on the training set size, because that's an equally important, uh, uh, that's an equally fundamental aspect of generalization that we should be able to capture to be able to fully understand generalization in deep learning. Now, th this is our first finding, which is an empirical limitation. Now, one might wonder, is it possible to somehow refine uniform convergence bounds very cleverly so that we can, some, we can surpass all these uh, empirical issues with uniform convergence. And to that, we present, to that hope, we present our second finding, which is a provable failure of uniform convergence. Specifically, we show that there are certain situations in deep learning where any uniform convergence bound, in whatever manner you try to define it, however clever you are, Will, pro will probably fail to explain generalization in those settings. So what do I mean by that? In these settings, even though the generalization gap will be really, really small, any refined uniform convergence bound will be vacuous and hence fail to explain why the network generalized well. So this is, our, this is the main uh, outline of our findings. So how exactly do we show this? A key element in our proof is the notion of a tightest uniform convergence bound that we introduce, which we eventually show is vacuous. Now, to understand what we mean by this, let's quickly go over some basic definitions. Given a training set S, let's say the algorithm learns a function H subscript S that fits the training set to zero error. Then with high probability over the draws of the training set, I, we have that the generalization gap upper bounds the difference between the test error and the empirical error on the data set S for the specific hypothesis H, uh, for the specific hypothesis that you learned on that data set. In other words, this is the difference between the test error and the training error. Now to upper bound this, we can turn to a naive conventional uniform convergence bound, which is essentially the difference between the test error and the empirical error taken uniformly across all hypotheses in the hypothesis class. Now, we know that this is a really loose quantity in deep learning, and we want to refine it. I, I, we want to refine it by excluding extraneous hypotheses from the hypothesis class. And we could do that in many different ways. For example, we could consider an L2 norm-bounded ball that contains all the relevant hypotheses, or an L1 norm-bounded ball that contains all hypotheses. But to get the tightest uniform convergence bound, we want to exclude all irrelevant hypotheses from the hypothesis class, and instead, focus on a most refined hypothesis class, which we will call as H star. And this class has those and only those hypotheses that your given algorithm would learn from data sets drawn from the given data distribution. And this excludes all other irrelevant hypotheses. Now, having defined this sort of a really small refined hypothesis class, you can think of a uniform convergence bound defined on this small set and such a bound would be tighter than any other refined uniform convergence bound that you can come up with. And then, having defined this in our work, in, we show that in certain settings, even this tightest bound will be vacuous. And therefore, all other refined uniform convergence bounds also become vacuous in these settings. Now, so how do we show that? In what settings do we, sh in what setting do we show that this sort of failure occurs? So we consider a uh, binary classification task with two uh, concentric hyperspheres, and you want to separate the inner hypersphere from the outer hypersphere. And these hyperspheres are very close to each other, but then there's no label noise, and therefore they are perfectly separable. 
Now we train, we, we, we take random data drawn uniformly from, the, from these two hyperspheres, and we train a ReLU network using SGD, and we observe that as we increase the number of training data points, the generalization gap improves as expected. Now to show failure of uniform convergence, there are two key steps. First, we take each training data point, and then we project it onto the opposite hypersphere, and we change the label of the data point to the label that corresponds to the opposite hypersphere. And then we take the set of all projected data points and call it the data set S prime. Now this is the first step. And the second step is to show that the, and the second key step is to show that S prime is completely misclassified by the neural network, even though S prime is a valid data set under the given data distribution. In other words, your network correctly classifies the training set S, it correctly classifies most random test data points, but it miserably fails on S prime. And intuitively, this can happen only if, you, if the boundary that you have learned has memorized certain skews around each training data point, and these skews are what cause the misclassification of the projected version of the training data points, as visualized in, in the graphic there. Now, what we show uh, what, what this means is that the le learned decision boundary is inherently quite complex, and we then mathematically show that this sort of complexity implies that even the most refined uh, hypothesis class that we saw a couple of slides ago, even that hypothesis class is quite complex, there, thereby rendering all uniform convergence bounds to be, to be vacuous. Now, this is the proof outline. Uh, taking a step back, the main takeaway here is that the decision boundary learned by deep networks on overparametrized, uh, uh, learned by SGD on overparametrized deep networks, is inherently quite complex, and this complexity limits uniform convergence bounds from explaining why they generalize well. And this complexity does not really hurt generalization. Now, uh, in conclusion, we cast suspicion of, uh, on uniform convergence bounds to be able to explain generalization in deep learning. We saw that they increase with training set size. And we, sh we saw that they provably fail in certain situations. But looking ahead, we believe it's important to mathematically understand the kind of complexities in the decision boundaries and to explore other learning theoretic tools. Or most excitingly, we could even derive new learning theoretic tools using our negative examples, like the hypersphere example, as test cases. But more broadly, we believe it's important to go beyond uniform convergence to crack the generalization puzzle. Thank you. Um, we have time for some questions. There are microphones, if you want to ask one. Um, could the spotlight presenters line up here? Uh, Shai. OK. So I mean, my first question is that you know, there's this famous paper of Moritz Hart and Ben Recht and some others that did something very similar on MNIST. They add random labels in the training time and the model fit perfectly in the training time and failed, of course, to generalize. So we already know for this paper that uh, generalization bounds of uniform convergence will not work because we know that deep neural networks learn MNIST very well. We know that it completely fails. I mean, it's like your experiment, but on real data. And once you show this failure, you know that the approach of, deep, of uh, uniform convergence will not work. So we know it for a few years already by very convincing uh, experimental evidence. And my other question is about how general your result could be. If you say any uniform convergence will fail, maybe my hypothesis space contains only the correct classifier, the exact correct classifier, and there, of course, I have uniform convergence. OK, uh, so if I understand the first question, it refers to what we knew about uniform convergence in the past. And I could potentially clarify this uh, offline, but. My clarification would be that what we knew was that uni when we apply uniform convergence on the whole class of functions represented by a deep network, then that would be vacuous. And, be because, 
and, the, and what we hoped was that if we could refine this function class, we can derive better bounds. And that is exactly what hundreds of papers have been doing over the last couple of years. So if it was obvious that uniform convergence would fail, then this direction would, is, is already sort of pointless, right? But, so it wasn't really clear that uniform convergence would fail if we were to cleverly apply it on a smaller function class. And our paper says that there are situations where even if you were to cleverly refine it, uniform convergence would fail. Um, but yeah, I can clarify this offline if that, was, that didn't answer your question. Uh, could you re remind me again what your other question No, no, but to the, to the first question, I mean, we know that uh, deep networks work perfectly well on MNIST. I, I apologize, Shai. We only have three minutes for questions. Okay. Uh, can we let someone else ask a question before we move on to spotlights? Okay. I'm sorry about that. Thanks. Okay. Yeah. Over here. Okay. Thanks. Uh, really cool talk. I'm just Thanks. wondering about this picture with the two hyperspheres. Um, you show that there are like these little wiggles, but I'm wondering if those are actually, you know, maybe those go all the way into the center of the sphere out to infinity as opposed to just cupping around the points. Have you looked at that? Because that's kind of yeah, what okay. I would naively expect. Uh, so uh, th this is just a cartoon, and you can look at the exact picture in our paper. Um, so. They don't look exactly like this. It's a lot. The, the skew is a bit smoother, first of all, and the sec and secondly, they don't go all the way to the center. They, uh, nor do they go all the way to infinity. They, you can see these sort of bulges around the boundary, uh, along the planes that contain the training data points. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Yep. Yeah. Uh, first, uh, uh, champion one of uh, Boston Data Science. First, a comment and a quick question. And the comment is that uh, the f I agree with the conclusion of uh, your research that uh, of, uh, generalization needs to take into account of uh, dependence on the distribution uh, or data set. And uh, there are plenty of work on, in this direction, uh, as uh, Shar mentioned earlier. The question here is uh, it, uh, regarding how you prove, uh, how you construct H star, the hypothesis class. And for uniform convergence to hold, the hypothesis class cannot see the data. But if you apply SDG first, you must see the data. So there's a contradiction. In the other words, you can't con construct H star before seeing the data. You must have a hypothesis class that doesn't, that holds for all the distributions. If you want to hold, have uh, H star constructed based on data, you have to run through all the possible probability distributions. Thank you. Yep. OK, so I, I guess this is sort of a technical question about how we define the most refined hypothesis class. So this, uh, I might not be able to explain that in just w in, in a minute. But the high level idea here is that um, we assume so when you when you derive an actual upper bound on the uniform on uniform convergence, there you have many restrictions as to how you can go about uh, defining the hypothesis class. But here we assume that the person who is deriving the uniform convergence bound has access to the underlying data distribution, and so they can they they, they have all the power in the world to tighten the uniform convergence bound as much as possible. And we show that even in this best case, uniform convergence is going to fail. So. Uh, if you were to add these additional restrictions that you were talking about, uh, your bound is only going to be more vacuous. So that's the high level idea, but yeah, I can, I, I'll be happy to clarify the technical details in person over the poster. But you see, our edge star can't be constructed without seeing the data. I'm sorry, we're really super late. Um, thank you. Let's thank the speaker again.